Catholic Church just around the corner. Which reminds us that although, despite all the the um, shortcomings of the age in which we live, and despite all the stupidity and the <laughs> ignorance that we see around us, still at, at bottom, people are naturally in this world. They're naturally religious. It's the most basic human instinct in fact, to believe in God. There will always be some intellectuals, uh, you know, who wish to disagree and draw attention to themselves sometimes with their arguments. But ultimately, this uh, is a place of religion. In the, in the Vedic tradition, you know, the old name for India is Bharat, as of course any of you, it's still the name for India if you're Indian. Uh, and Bharat Varsha <coughs> is traditionally in the Vedic history. Bharat Varsha is the name for the whole Earth planet. And it's said to be the place of religion. Only in the present age, uh, there's a tendency, a very strong tendency, to, to forget. Um, but when, <clears throat> um, when life becomes difficult, people do tend to, you know, they turn to God still. But when uh, Srila Prabhupada first came to England, he was met at the airport by a delegation of reporters. Um, I mentioned George Harrison just now. The devotees had met George Harrison, this was in 1969, 68 they met him. And by the summer of 69, George Harrison had worked with the devotees and they'd made a, a recording of the Hare Krishna mantra, which immediately went into the top ten. You know, it was hugely popular. I sang it, I was an art student, and me and my friends were singing Hare Krishna. Uh, I remember going on long country walks, I had the faintest idea what it meant, but it just was such a lovely sound, and I would sing it to myself. So when Prabhupada arrived, he was met by a whole group of reporters, very eager to interview the uh, guru of George Harrison. That's how he was known. And they, one reporter asked him a very good leading question. He said, why have you come? And Prabhupada said, I've come to teach you what you have forgotten. Uh, and that is God. He said, some people are saying God is dead or God is void or impersonal. I have come to teach, I think he actually used the word nonsense. I've come to teach all these nonsense. <laughs> I can't remember, but I think he used a strong word. That there is God. Uh, and that you can have a relationship with him. So, you know, forgetfulness is there and... Uh, we need to be reminded. Usually, you know, if, if you actually get someone to stop, which is quite difficult, in, especially in this passionate city, to actually stop and think, they will eventually come back to, you know, quite profound uh, ideas about why, you know, they're here. I have a friend who made uh, a video doing exactly that. He, he went to busy places in, in uh, he went to Canary Wharf and he went to London Bridge uh, by the city and stopped people in the street with a camera and a microphone. And he got, he's got a very engaging personality, his name is Ravinor, there's no Ravi. Uh, and he, you know, he got them to stop and he just said, said to them, what's your idea of success? So, some people, you know, they didn't have time and they were just rushed away, but he got people to stop uh, momentarily to suggest, oh, um, you know, to make money or to uh, have a, a family, uh, to be have a family who love you. Uh, different answers were given, but he's very clever, Ravi, now I can't remember exactly how he did it, but he then would ask them another question, so what do you... So supposing someone said, well, success, quite a few people said, uh, would be to be happy. 
Well, what do you mean by happiness? What would that mean? So then he got on to think a bit deeper. Well, to have the things I want, so what do you want? Uh, and pretty soon, you know, but the film was edited together very nicely. I could recommend it's on the internet. Uh, he pretty soon, many of these people, they started to say, well, what I really want is I want love. I would like to be able to give love and be loved. Quite a few people said that. Well, they said success would be able to, would be to be able to give something back to make other people happy. Question, you know, answers like that started coming out and you start to go quite deep, actually. So Srila Prabhupada, you know, he, he brought the reports up short. He said, I've come to teach what you've forgotten, which is God. And we do spend, you know, most of our lives forgetting. That's the, the nature of this passionate world that we're so busy with the, you know, the urgent demands of day-to-day -day life uh, that uh, we tend to forget. What is it I'm actually living for? Uh, and so we, Prabhupada, when he came, uh, came, when he came to the West, he brought with him the Srimad Bhagavatam. The Srimad Bhagavatam, which means the beautiful story of the personality of Godhead. Uh, and this was a, an old edition, but not as old as the one Prabhupada brought. It was, that was printed in India. Um, and it was very charming. There is a facsimile edition you can get, actually because he printed it in India, in Delhi in the 60s, um, using the old letterpress technique. So it's got a few mistakes here and there, typos, even though he checked it and checked it, but he was one man working on his own. Uh, and it has a, a quaint sort of Indian English that Prabhupada wrote him occasionally. Uh, but the meaning was so clear, and that's, that was the, the book that we had at the beginning of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. The first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam in three volumes. Uh, and it was written by Prabhupada on his own in Vrindavan and in Delhi in the uh, late 50s and early 60s on a typewriter. And then he'd carry it round sheaves of paper to the printer, have them turn it into the letterpress, you know, where each letter is put into a block, uh, and then the block is tightened and the block is put on the printer and inked, and sheet by sheet, you know, eight pages at a time, the thing is printed out, and very laborious, not like printing is today at all. But for Prabhupada, it was a labor of, of love, and it was also the foundation for the service that he took upon, that he'd been given to do by his guru, which was to teach Krishna consciousness to the English-speaking peoples of the world. And so his guru told him, if you teach the English-speaking people, that will do good for them, and it would also do good for you, which is, what more could you want, you know, but an activity that will benefit yourself and others, 